everyone, Jenny Clark here from Jenny Clark Quilting. I'm here with a great video to show you about some of my favorite tools that I like to use when I'm here. Okay, so I'm here to show you about some of my favorite tools that I love to use for paper piecing. Now I've been a certified instructor for about three years, but I've been sewing and quilting my whole life. And of course, there's all kinds of tools and things out there to use, but I just wanted to narrow it down to exactly what you need to paper piece. So here we go. So the very first thing that you need is a good, reliable sewing machine. Just to make sure that it's been serviced recently, it works good, it sews a good quarter inch seam, you can sew a nice straight line with it, your stitches look good. As long as it's reliable, it doesn't have to be a brand new machine, doesn't have to have all the bells and whistles, then you're going to want to make sure that you have a new needle. What we like to use when we paper piece, especially the Quilt Works quilts, is a size 70 10 needle. This is a Schmetz needle. But it doesn't have to be this brand, but Microtex, Universal, doesn't really matter what specific type of needle it is, as long as it's a 70-10. It works great, goes right through your paper, and it helps you rip it easier as well. So the next thing that you need is some threads. You need to have a nice cotton quality thread, and I love, love Aurifil. Um, you want to make sure that you have a color that's kind of neutral with your fabrics. Then if you're going to be using some darker colors, then you probably want to have a little bit darker color than this when you're piecing your pieces together. So the next thing you need, I'm going to show you my little deck of cards here. You need to have a nice rotary cutter. Um, I have three different sizes here that I like to use, but you only really need at least one. If you only can get one rotary cutter, then I recommend you get the 60 millimeter. But I've got a 45 millimeter as well as a 28 millimeter. Make sure you have a nice sharp blade when you start your project because you're gonna be cutting through lots of fabrics and lots of papers. So you want your blade to be nice and sharp. It'll cut through just like butter if you got a nice sharp blade. Then the next thing you make sure that you're going to have is an add a quarter ruler and a template plastic. This is a piece of template plastic. We call it our fold template. It's three inches by 12 inches. And then I've got a 12 inch add a quarter ruler and a six inch quarter ruler. These are probably going to be the most common sizes that you're going to need. You, there is an 18 inch ruler that you can get if you're going to be working on some longer pieces, but Probably the one that you will use the most is the 12 inch. So another tool that you'll want to make sure that you have is a glue stick. There's all different kinds. You can use Elmer's glue. This is kind of a popular one for paper piecing. Um, this is what is going to glue your fabric to your paper. So this is not considered fabric to fabric glue. It's fabric to paper for your very first piece. The other type of glue that we've recently started suggesting that people get is repositionable glue. And this is going to help when you do your tea templates, when you're cutting out just a big large piece of fabric that needs to be cut to the exact size. I'll have a video coming up on how to use this glue to help you cut out your tea templates. The other glue that we recommend you have is a glue pen. This is so line, but there's all kinds of different brands out there that you can get. This is a fabric to fabric glue pen. So this helps you when you're assembling your quilt and you're going to want to make sure that you get a few refills for this because you'll probably, this is going to become one of your favorite tools. I know I use it a lot. So another thing that you'll need when you get ready to start cutting out your papers is you're going to need a stapler and you'll want a staple remover. Any staple, <laughs> staple remover brand will do, as long as you can staple some papers together, but you definitely want to have a staple remover so you can get those staples out afterwards. Okay, once you get ready to start cutting out your fabrics, then you're gonna to want to make sure that you have a variety of rulers. My favorite ruler is my Creative Grids ruler. This is an eight and a half by 24 inch What's nice about it is it helps me cut all my long strips when you have to do your with the fabric strips. 
It's eight and a half inches wide, so you can cut a variety of sizes with this, which is, for Judy's patterns, we cut a lot of different sizes of strips. Then for the smaller cuts, I like to have, I've got a three and a half by 12 and a half, and I also have my two and a half by six and a half ruler. These are all creative grids rulers. Um, I like them because they don't slide around. Those are my favorite rulers that I like to use when I paper piece. Another tool that you're gonna need, and I know that you don't like this, now, I don't like it, but we all make mistakes and we have to take pa uh, fabric and paper apart. You'll want to have your normal seam ripper, but my favorite tool is this. It's called the Quick Ripper. This is an awesome little tool. I use it all the time, but it helps take off that fabric really quick. The nice thing about it, it doesn't tear your papers and it doesn't cut your fabric. I will be coming up with a quick video, keep an eye out for it, on how to use the Quick Ripper to fix our little mistakes. Another thing you want to have around is a supply of flower head pins. We don't really use them a lot when we're paper piecing, but they help us with assembly when we're doing curved seams, pinning a few pieces together. But for the most part, I like to use glue. I don't like to use pins that much, but you still want to make sure you have them around. Another thing that we use a lot in our quilt works paper piecing is paper clips. This is a jumbo paper clip and you want to make sure that it's smooth. You don't want to get those ones that have the little ridges on the side because, well, they work, but they don't slide on the paper as well. And sometimes they catch up with your fabric. Then you'll also want to have some binder, a variety of binder clips. This is the jumbo size. And then you can get um, some smaller binder clips as well. These ones work really well. And you're going to want to make sure that you have a nice little small iron. You don't have to have a small one, but I like to have an iron right next to my sewing machine so I'm not constantly getting up and down, up and down. So I've got this new Aliso um, compact iron. It is, you can use steam with it. I usually don't use steam when I'm paper piecing, but it's a really nice iron and you'll also want some sort of pressing surface. I like to use a wool mat, um, but any pressing surface that you have will work. So you wanna have a pressing surface and you'll also want to have a, a cutting mat. Um, it doesn't have to be a huge one. I, I would say the recommended size would be at least an 18 by 24 inch cutting mat so you can cut your pieces. Okay. So now I'm gonna to get to some of my other favorite, I guess they're not really tools, they would be considered more of a notion, but I have discovered these Acorn Precision Piecing products. The one of them is the Easy Press Fabrics Treatment. You use this when you're, when you're assembling and you add it to one of these little pens. It has a tip kind of like a highlighter. Let me show it to you real quick. A little highlighter tip like that. You press this along your seam. I'll have a video coming up on how to use this. Oh, it makes your seams nice and flat. The other thing that I like to use is, I have the four ounce bottle of it. It's called Seam Align Glue, and you can also get it in a little one ounce bottle. It's nice because it has this little um, applicator tip on it. But this is awesome when you're assembling your pieces. I do like to use my sew line glue pen, but the bad thing about this is it leaves a lot of glue residue, especially if it goes outside of your quarter inch. Then when you fold it over to press, you'll see little spots of glue that are the blue or the pink. This is clear and it doesn't leave a residue like this. This works awesome, I love it. Okay, so I've covered all of my favorite tools and notions that I like to use when I'm paper piecing. I hope you'll stick around, consider subscribing to my channel if you found some of my information useful. You should be able to find most of these products at your local quilt shop. Please support your local quilt shop. Um, I do carry a few things on my website. Feel free to click on over there. I've got a link down below to my website. Okay, well that concludes my video today. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video useful or helpful in uh, deciding what tools that you need to use for paper piecing, I would sure appreciate you subscribing to my channel. Uh, let your friends know. Stay tuned for more videos on basic paper piecing 
tips and tricks and some short and sweet tutorials on how to paper piece quilt works and Judy Niemeyer projects. Thank you so much.